a lot of guys in the 70s bought thinking it was going to last. I, I, I mean, I remember, I remember having in 2012, man, everybody was buying new combines because prices were, man, they were Commodity good. prices were high. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and <clears throat> how can a, how can a grower, a, a, you know, a younger farmer, and it's, could, this could, this could be for so many people in so many walks of agriculture, you know, how do they weigh that risk versus reward? You know, from a business side, really looking at numbers, et cetera, what's the fine line in everyone's case is different on what advice would you have to farmers that farmers probably don't even think about sometimes? Well, I think the realities of economics, if you if a young person wants to start um, farming, is they need a partnership with landowners. And, and they're going to have to focus their investment, their capital on, on machinery and equipment and technology. And the input costs, you know, are significant, particularly in row crop. So they, they need that partnership of, of land, you know, working with landowners to, to find the, you know, the available, available acres to, to grow crops on. You know, that's, I think that's just um, a kind of a business premise so you're going to have you've, you've got to have working capital to put in the, the crop and and the equipment um, some now could be custom hired but you don't want to give all you know the control over to a third party to to plant your crop and harvest the crop just with the risk and the, and the timing involved mm-hmm. um, so I you know investing in cropland is is probably something that that most of the younger operators do a little bit later in in their um that would be more safer in, yeah in in their business well i think it's it's a constraint of sorts okay. but but it's an important part of your long-term plan um as a grower because that's that's where the value is is going to build i mean we all know uh, the machinery equipment um is expensive but it's eventually going to be worth near near zero yeah or some you know, some salvage value for the iron in it, uh, so it, it's an important part of a of a business model for a farmer. But I think you know there's there's a lot of good operation a lot of, and opportunities for for profitability in in uh, farming, renting ground. Yeah. Uh, but you know it gives you the scale a lot quicker. So I think it takes both, and yeah. and I think it's just unless you come from a set of circumstances where you've got family cropland to, to take over and farm. Um, you know, you need, you also need that, that personality and kind of that business development mindset to go out and find uh, landowners that are willing to work with you. And that's a skill that, that I think is, is not a traditional skill for a no. lot of farmers. No, it's not. Farmers tend to be more the quieter type that generally don't like any kind of confrontation. <laughs> Some farmers do. Some farmers love it. But um, I guess in regards to, you know, you've been in the position where you were looking for, you know, say you bought this piece of Chase County land, you know, um, you're new to the area. What, what were you looking for? What, what, is, what do you value in someone that you're looking for to be the tenant of your land? What, what's that? What, what's something that you and Colleen look for that's valuable that farmers can be like, I can work on that. I need to work on that. Yeah. Well, uh, being able to, to trust that operator is, is kind of the foundational requirement when, when the landowner is taking shares. Um, you know, it's clear that you know, loads of grain could be diverted. And, and the landlord wouldn't necessarily ever know or, or even just a partial load. So that trust that, that the yield is going to be reported and delivered accurately is, is foundational. Um, and then I, I like to know how, you know, not, not in terms of dollars, but how the operators capitalize in terms of operating equipment. You know, mm. are, do they have the scale um, when, when weather conditions are are challenging to come in quickly and plant and also quickly harvest the, the crop. Sometimes the windows are really s- small to accomplish that work. So they need to be 
you know, well capitalized. Um, and, and then I, you know, I think the, the best operators I've worked with, and your dad was one of them, told me what I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. And so mm-hmm. we went through, you know, a bit of an interview process uh, with, with a few farmers when we bought this, this ground in Chase County because we, we didn't know people in the community here, which was very different from the land that we had bought previously. Yeah, it was more in the home area. I, I, I had grown up in that area. And, um, and so, you know, your dad, Charles, you know, told me, no, we're not putting corn in and here's why, because the field floods, it's higher risk. If you want, if you want more guarantee, you know, assurance that you're going to have a, a yield, we're going to put soybeans in there the first year. And that was a good decision. Mm-hmm. And, um, cause I had other growers trying to convince me, well, we need to put that field in, in corn and it, and it can grow some corn, but it was yeah. higher risk. And we had to learn what areas of the field were optimal right. to raise it corn. It was higher in. risk. And, and, you know, I think, you know, your operation is, is the most communicative uh, with me, communicative I should say, in terms of just keeping us apprised of when you plant it or when you're, you know, planning to go out to the field uh, to, with the planter and when you're going to apply top dress fertilizer or, or fungicide or, um, you know, if you got pressure uh, with weeds when you're, when you're putting another application of herbicide on the, on the row crop. And, and I really appreciate that. I'm interested in it, Mm -hmm. but that is an exception. Um, You know, I, I think the more traditional grower calls about one time a year and I have, I have, I've worked with operators like this and they've done a good job, but but the communication is primarily around harvest time, and yeah. that's it. Yeah. And that's, that's really one touch point, maybe two a year. And I think that's, that's missing an opportunity if you're a, a farmer and, and you're trying to develop relationships with landowners. That's not enough communication. 